Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGangi, doing political commentary here with The Media Speaks, and it is time, unfortunately, for the massive Fukushima update. I say unfortunately because, uh... How are you ever going to have good news on uh, Fukushima Day? But it matters because your health matters, and this affects your health. Uh, low deaf people here. High deaf over there. If you're not watching live, you may want to go to uh, youtube.com slash the correct views and uh, go to the H deaf. All right, friends. This is brought to you by stickerjunkie.com. You want to have really amazing looking stickers? Go to stickerjunkie.com and tell them you heard about it from the correct views. You're going to get a discount if you do that. Um, statesmanjournal.com Fukushima radiation has reached North American shores. My, my problem with this is that the article is misleading in that they are encouraging you to believe that we have just now found Fukushima radiation on the West Coast. That's not true. We have been finding it since day one. We have reported on here, here the tens of hundreds of times that we know of that it has happened. This is not new. However, in that uh, it's at least being uh, reported on now and not swept under the carpet is newsworthy, so I'm leading with it. Very poorly misleading written article, though. Seaborne radiation from Japan's Fukushima nuclear disaster has reached North America. Scientists at the Woodhole Oceanographic Institution detected small amounts of cesium-134 and cesium-137, that is heart disease, that is cancer, in a sample of seawater taken in February from a dock on Vancouver Island, British Columbia. Uh, I do believe it was the correct views that said you should not live on the West Coast. You should not live in uh, the West Coast of Canada or Alaska or especially California, Oregon, and Washington. You should not be living in Hawaii because of the amount of seafood that you're going to be coming into contact with. And everyone said I was crazy. And yet, Everything I've said has been coming true. So if you want to live around cesium, then go ahead. Go. It's great. It, you, you'll love it. It'll kill you. It said it's the first time that is not true that radioactivity from the March 11th triple meltdown has been identified on West Coast shores. He should lose his ability to even write a journal for a magazine after that stupid comment. Woods Hole chemical oceanographer Ken Busler emphasized that the radiation is at very low levels that aren't expected to harm human health or the environment. No, they always say this. They always say that it's such a low risk, and they compare it to a dental x-ray. Well, you know what? That's very, very misleading, and I can tell you one reason why. It, it was mentioned very well by Dr. Chris Busby. You can look him up if you doubt the uh, words I'm giving you here. And I've done this before on the show. If you take a hot coal and you put it over here on this chair that's off camera, over here on the chair. It's probably not going to radiate enough heat to keep me very warm in this studio. And I'm going to be very cold very quickly. However, if I take that same coal and I hold it here in my hand while I'm talking to you, it's going to burn a hole through my hand. That is the difference when you are dealing with radiation and someone telling you something is safe. You remember the analogy that I gave you and you'll realize very quickly that small doses are not safe doses. That is an analogy that will get you through the day. It said it also showed higher than background levels for cesium-137. That's another uh, Fukushima isotope and uh, it's, it's present in bomb testing. Well, if, if you don't know how dangerous bomb testing is, look up the Conqueror. Uh, it's a uh, rather poor but funny to watch John Wayne movie. Um, it, it, it's, he was just ill cast. It's not so much him. He was just ill cast. And uh, everybody that worked on the movie to any degree died of cancer from the fallout of the bombs. And they were also told that that was safe. Look that up if you don't believe me. They were told to watch the show and the colors and the sky. And what they did was shorten their lives by decades. It says in October, it was a sample was taken 745 miles west of Vancouver, British Columbia, and it tested positive for cesium-134. Um, in November, it was reported that Fukushima radiation had been identified in 10 offshore samples, including one 100 miles off the coast of Eureka, California. 
The Vancouver Island sample was taken February 19th from the dock in Usalet, a working harbor community in Pacific Rim National Park Reserve. It contained 1.5 becquerels per meter of cesium-134. This is going to get worse and worse as we go. It was five becquerels of cesium-137. That's a lot of reactions to be taking place inside of you, just dying to give you cancer. So, friends, again, go look the article up, but don't believe this madness that they, they're they just spotting it now. That's that's an untruth in every possible way. That is a, a disservice to journalism for that bonehead to have written that. Um, friends, we're going to move on to Zero Hedge. Fukushima's nuclear reactor fuel is missing. Well, we know that some of it was a melt out. That means that due to the meltdown and the explosion, much of the fuel from the plants has blown out of Fukushima. You can find it in some of the black tar that is absolutely carcinogenic and toxic in every way. This black guh that's all over uh, Tokyo, or at least was. It is part of the fuel. We know this. That has been tested. It's almost never reported on. That is part of the fuel. Now, whether it's this fuel, I, I'm, I'm not going to say that, but you get the point. This is bad. It says, in the same week as Japan unveils its Pacific Rim-esque anti-tsunami wall public works project, the Japanese government auditors say the operator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant has wasted more than a third of the 190 billion yen, that's 1.6 billion dollars in taxpayer money that was allocated for cleaning up the plant after it was destroyed in March of 2011. Yeah, they tried to build the wall. Uh, for those of you that might not know, they, they you can build a subway by freezing an ice wall and it, pr it allows the workers to work in a more solid environment. It's not so mushy and gushy. Well, it didn't work. And for one thing, they tried to use it on way too much of a scale. They, they spent millions, and all it did was potentially make the problem worse. It says, Fukushima won't be truly safe until engineers can remove the reactor's nuclear fuel, but first, they have to find it. And so, in February of this year, two mound detectors were installed outside uh, Fuku Daiichi Unit 1, uh, the ruins of that reactor, and it was a uh, vessel height. It was for the purpose of finding the missing, re missing reactor fuel. Again, it's so poisonous that you cannot go in it to look. You would be dead within uh, minutes. It says, first, as the AP reports, Japanese government auditors say the operator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant has wasted more than a third of the $1.6 billion in taxpayer money. A board of audit report describes various expensive machines and untested measures that ended in failure. It also says that the cleanup work has been dominated by one group of Japanese utility construction and electronic giants, despite repeated calls for more transparency and greater access for international bidders. Now, what does that mean? You tune into the correct views to have things put in everyday terms. One company or one set of companies under a conglomerate is getting all of the business, like no bid contracts. They're being paid exuberant amounts of money for subpar work to get into these contracts to clean this plant up instead of using the cheapest and what could likely be the best other alternatives that are out there or other people that will at least do as good of a job but are doing so cheaper they, there's no big contracts they're using it to make money off of they don't really care that much about the uh, the ever decreasing lifespan of its own people as this carries on it says Tokyo Electric Power Company spokesman Taruki Kabayashi said that all of the equipment contributed to stabilizing the plant, even though some only operated briefly. Yeah, anything to save face here, listen to this. Um, some of the failures, French import, among the costliest failures was a $270 million machine made by French nuclear giant Arriva SA to remove radioactive cesium from water leaking from the three wrecked reactors. Remember that? We reported on that here. It says the trouble plagued machine lasted just three months and treated only 77,000 gallons of, tons of water. Excuse me. That's a tiny fraction of the volume leaking every day. That's about 350,000 tons. 
It has been since replaced with Japanese and American machines. Salt removal. Seawater was used early in the crisis to cool the reactors after the normal cooling systems failed. Machines costing $150 million from several companies, including Hitachi, GE, Nuclear Energy, Toshiba, and Arriva, were supposed to remove the salt from the contaminated water at the plant. One of the machines functioned for only five days, and the longest lasted just six weeks. Now, these are the people that are telling you that they have this all under control and that they know exactly what it is that they need to be doing. Is there anyone listening to my voice right now that thinks that maybe that might be stretching the truth just a little? Shoddy tanks. TEPCO hurriedly built dozens of storage tanks, as we've done countless shows on here. And it says uh, the tanks were made for the contaminated water at a cost of $134 million. The shoddy tanks, using rubber seals, to keep in mind uh, radiation cooks things, and assembled by unskilled workers, and they didn't know how to make the tanks, so that they wasted them. They, they, they buy expensive machines that don't work, but then they hire workers that don't know what they're doing to do work. It says they began leaking and some water seeped into the ground and then into the ocean. The tanks are now being replaced with more durable, welded ones. What a novel idea. Again, every time this goes into the ocean, it goes